Okay, folks. Uh, this is about my third attempt making a stupid fucking video. Because uh, Fraps kept detecting my webcam as a audio source rather than my headphones. So, it's fixed now. So, hopefully, you know, there's you can actually hear me. So, here we are. Uh, we're going to cover uh, how to uh, uh, pre-flight and uh, engine start and taxi to uh, runway and DCS A10 you, while in the A10C. This is a light my cigarette. There we go. Uh, one thing you want, there's a couple things on this briefing page you want to pay attention to. The first one is uh, this right here, JTAC unit frequencies. Uh, the JTAC is, uh, thankfully there's only one and it's at uh, 30 megahertz. Um, Whenever we get into the pit and I show you the backup uh, or the uh, FM radio, it uh, its default setting is at 30, so we don't have to do much here. This is the other important thing, and your weather. Uh, temperature, this is stuff we want to write down. Temperature is uh, 8 degrees. Uh, wind is at, uh, at ground level. It's 1 meter per second at uh, 160 degrees at 2,000 feet or meters it is at uh, 5 meters per second at 243 and at 8,000 it's at 2 meters per second at 71 but something's fishy here because rarely do you see such uh, drastic wind direction changes as well as the wind actually slowing down as you get up to uh, altitude it normally is normally doubles it goes from one I would expect it to go from one to two to four uh, so let's go to our mission planner and see where they got us taken off from okay so they got us taken off from Kobaletti. Uh before we do anything here though let's go to our payload screen and select a payload. Uh, on your payload screen, you can. There's about a bazillion templates you can choose from, uh, and you can also make copies of the templates and, and kind of create, modify it to fit your own needs, which is what I've done here. Uh, on this one, I've got uh, two Sidewinders targeting pod, six uh, AMG 65H models, which are an upgraded version of the B model. Uh, we've got a pair of CBU-97s and uh, a pair of GBU-38s, but let's, let's cover the AMG-65s real quick. Uh, the D model is your IR. Okay, I always get confused on that, but D model is IR, H model is uh, closed circuit TV. Just, keep, just try and remember that. Uh, and over here on Station 1, we have our jammer pod. So, uh, I think we're good to go here. Let's uh, exit out of this. Oh, whoops, wrong button. Now, let's head back to Kobaletti here. We want to write down our TACAN freak and our ILS freak uh, in case we get damaged and our uh, systems go kind of wonky. So, TACAN freak is 67X. ILS freak is 111.5. And that's all we have to do in our uh, pre flight. And I'll see you guys in the pit. Okay, so here we are. Getting ready to get this thing crack a lacking. So let's start it up. Uh, one thing uh, that you're going to notice is that there's a bug. Look over here. Um, this is our AM radio. It is off. We think. So let's turn. Let's close our canopy first. Right click and hold that button. Now let's turn our battery on. Hey, wait a minute. What? Why am I getting radio? What the shit? Over? Um, that's the bug. So give me a few seconds here. We're going to turn our... We're going to fix this now. Uh, I am running the advanced radio setting, so I have to load in frequencies. 
So one two four zero zero is the freak for Allied flights. So let's turn our radio on. Right click to go to transmit receive mode, and you're going to click the load button. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to left click on this wheel, and then you're going to load in. I forgot to get the goddamn radio freak for the fucking Cobalt. Uh, hopefully I got it in my little printouts here. Never ever forget to do what I just did. Because <laughs> you're going to be sitting here like a dipshit. Uh, let's see here. Check dispense programs. Click that's right there. That's Signatures. Pontiac 3. Tally bandit at bullseye 196. Uh, at 7,000. Crosswind charts. QRH. Kobolady. Let's see here. Defending bandit at bullseye 196. Uh, tower frequency 13300. Pontiac 1. Engaging bandit so at bullseye one Left right click on that. Left click on that. Click load. And then right click to put it into the preload. Now all of a sudden uh, we're not getting our frequency, our radio chatter from Allied flights. So that's a good thing. Now let's get back to what we were doing here. Uh, pedo heat, click that, load it up. Oxygen flow, click that and load that up. You're going to see once we click our inverter from off to standby we get our oxygen flow click and hold the oxy test once it gets to uh, 500 psi there we go and we're good and then we're going to click and hold here for our fuel indication test you see both needles go to 3000 psi and uh, or a little less than 3000 psi and 5900 uh, pounds in the uh, fuel indication. So now that we got all that up and running, let's turn on our APU. Cannot start the engines without your APU running. So, pay attention to this dial. Once this dial, once the needle hits 90%, you can turn on your APU power generator without getting a uh, master caution warning. Alright, so, go over here to fuel flow, these are, you want to make sure all these are in the forward position, that way your engines are actually getting go juice. Uh, while we're sitting here, before we get anything else going, we're going to go over here, we're going to right click once to turn on our UHF radio, this is, uh, UHF radio is used to communicate between your flight. Change the frequency to 251. Uh, and we're good to go there. And this is our backup, or this is our FM radio. Uh, if we remember, uh, 30 uh, uh, megahertz was the uh, frequency for JTAC. So we don't really need to do anything here. Click, right click the knob to put it into transmit receive mode. Uh, click the load button and then right click to put it into the pre put it into the preloaded uh, channel uh, setting and I think that's just about all we have to do for now uh, let's go ahead and call the tower uh, bring up our VHF AM radio frequency uh, F5 to get to tower. Cobaletti, request Cobaletti. startup. Cobaletti, Springfield, 1-1. One, one. Request startup. And because our menu changed from request startup to request taxi, we can go ahead and start our engines uh, without pissing off anybody in the tower. Uh, engine start, it's... Uh, the default keys are right control, 
uh, home and I believe right shift home for the left and right engines. I've got it mapped to my uh, Super Wicked uh, Thrustmaster Warthog. So let's go ahead and uh, start up the left engine. See the uh, throttle knob move up just a tick. Look back here, we can see our engine starting to turn a little bit. And right here is our PSI indication. Once PSI hits 60 uh, and is stabilized, the engine is good to go. You're also going to notice over here on the hydraulic pressures. Uh, hydraulic pressure is between 3 and 4,000 PSI, meaning we've, we've got good hydraulic pressure on the left side. And our engine, our left engine is stable. So let's go ahead and kick up the right engine. See it start to turn a little bit. Alright, both engines are stable. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, aircraft generators that are powered by the engines. And turn off our APU, APU generator and then turn off our APU. Next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go over here to the CICU and the Iggy. And we're going to put both those switches to on. And we're going to go up here to the CICU JRTS and click both those put both those into the on position and put the IFCC into test mode. IFCC is basically your HUD. Uh, see we got a pre-flight pit test. Click enter to go ahead and run that. And while we're waiting for all this shit to get rolling we're going to right click our two knobs on our MFDs and turn on our MFDs. While we're sitting here looking at this one we're going to turn on our anti-skid and turn our landing lights down to taxi don't really need landing lights because it's the middle of the fucking day, but that's neither here nor there. Now, because we're going into combat zone, let's turn our lights off. Lights are bad. Alright, uh, so we've got our MFDs powered up. we got a DTS upload screen. Pull data up, transfer pull up. system. Altitude, altitude, altitude. And our bit check is about to be complete with no errors. Uh, see this little these little messages here click the act button to get those off the uh, MFD page uh, pay attention to these asterisks we're gonna click load all those disappear once those reappear that means all the data is loaded up and you can start navigating through your uh, uh, MFDs while we're waiting for that to load up we will uncage our backup HSI and get it kind of centered there And we're good to go. So let's bring up our digital stores management screen. And go over here and bring up our CDU screen. CDU. Once this number reads 4.0.0.8, then go into nav mode. Just because it says nav ready doesn't mean it's nav ready. Because it's not. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, before we get started on this... Let's go back to our HUD and exit out of that. Hit the rocker key twice and exit out of that. CCIP consent. Let's go up to that and change it to 3x9. Uh, there are two types of release modes in CCIP. One is 3x9, one is 5mm. 5mm is much more accurate and much more of a pain in the ass to deal with. But because I'm using... Uh, cluster munitions and we'll probably drop them in CCRP anyway I put that in uh, 3 by 9 and we could take the HUD out of test mode and there we go everything's there yay now back to our DSMS let's click our missile page and power up our Mavericks can't use the Maverick unless you power it up just like in uh, Falcon 4 which I think they took the cue from this but that's new 
Uh, back to the SMS page, and let's go to profile, shall we? See what we've currently got loaded on the aircraft, GBU-38s. Those are in CCRP mode, which is the only way they can be released. Let's change the minimum release altitude to about uh, three, yeah, we'll say 300 meters, or 300 feet. Put type 300 into the scratch pad, and then click the OSB, and it loads it there. And then you click the save button to save that data. Now, on to our CBUs. Let's change these to, say, ripple, ripple singles. Put that on two. Go down to ripple quantity to two. So basically what that means is it will release the bombs one at a time at uh, an interval of two. So it will drop one, and then 75 feet later it will drop the other one. Change the mode to CCRP. And let's change, go over here and change our minimum altitude. We'll call it 900 feet, why not? And you'll see why here momentarily. Minimum altitude, 900 feet. Now, there is a trick with the CPUs to make it much more accurate than what they generally are. What you do is you go to your inventory page and select one of your CPU stations. And then we're gonna go to the CPU. And we're going to select the CBU we have loaded on the aircraft, in this case, CBU-97. HOF, height of function. That's the height that the, that the uh, CBU will open and release, its, release the munitions inside. So we're going to change that to 900 as well. And you have two options over here. One is to load it for that specific station and other is load it for the system. Because we're carrying a pair of CBUs, uh, we're gonna load it for the system. And just to verify that that is correct and got loaded in properly, let's go over to our other CBU station, and it is. So we're good to go. Uh, let's open up our TAD page here. We can see that we got our map loaded in. Our uh, INS is ready, is aligned, so let's click the nav button. Go down here to this area just below the uh, uh, backup uh, HSD and click the Iggy button. Now then, we're starting to get down to it here. Let's uh, arm the ejection seat, go over here to pitch and yaw SAS. Put those in the forward position. Activate takeoff trim. Sorry, my, I think my uh, track IR is off kilter a little bit here because it keeps cutting in and out. Let me try and get this fixed. There we go, that's a little better. Uh, these two switches, this makes, this actually enables your autopilot. Uh, radar altimeter, we're going to select that to norm. And EAC, we're going to put that to arm. And as you can see, we've got no master caution lights up. Uh, we're technically ready for takeoff, but we're not quite ready for takeoff, actually. So we're going to uh, left-click this uh, CM uh, 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 electronic warning system panel to power it up. And we're going to activate our missile warning system, our jammer, and our radar warning system. And I'll go more into depth into this uh, at a later time. Now then back to our some of the data that we that we took in our briefing specifically went uh, one of the things we want to do is click this function button and click the number one to go to system <clears throat> then we're going to go over here and we're going to click the last T OSB go down to wind and it says the wind is zero, which is good. Uh, let's call the tower. Capaletti. Capaletti. Springfield. One one. Request taxi to runway. If there is some wind, it'll it'll give us the wind whenever we go to taxi. 
Oh, sorry. taxi but you know just to be safe let's go ahead and put this wind data in anyway uh let's see here what was it one meter per second at one six zero so how we're going to enter our wind is we're going to click zero zero and click the osb to load in the altitude level and then we're going to click zero two click that osb and zero eight and click that osb now we're going to click wind edit Let's see here. One meter per second at one six zero. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go one six zero zero one and load it up. And then we're going to do two four three at five two four three zero five. And then we're going to go 071 at 2. And the temperature was 8. And it's got the temperature reading up there too. 08. All right, we're good to go. Now, why did I go through that Hugamaru to get that shit up and running? Uh-oh. Whoops. Uh, I will explain it momentarily. Let's load up our... Which one is the steer point? Da -da 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 -da. There it is. And before I get into wind, let's left click here to put the uh, CICU into uh, flight plan mode, which gives us our flight path on our TADS display. And then we're going to put it, the uh, Iggy into steer point mode, which gives us our steer point information on our CDU display. Now then, back to the wind idea. Why is wind such a big deal? Well, in this game, not, not so much in Falcon 4, but in this, wind has a drastic effect on bombs. So if you program your wind in and, it, and the information is accurate, uh, you're going to, uh, your bombs are going to hit dead nuts on. Whereas if you don't program them in, especially if they're dumb bombs, nine times out of ten they're gonna miss so make sure when you're in your pre-flight screens before you hop into the pit you know what your wind is right off the bat now like I said that's accurate that sometimes that can be inaccurate but if you go up to again go and hit the function button and then click the number one so function one there we go and then go to lat latsy and then click wind Whenever you're at altitude, it's at, it'll it'll give you the information to the wind, like what direction it's coming from and the speed. And if you pay attention to what your altitude is, you can actually enter it while you're in flight. So uh, actually, it looks like our wind is actually off here. So let's change that. One nine three at zero one. All 
Alright, whatever. Let's get crack a lacking, shall we? Function. Put it back in steer point mode. Uh, and I said 2.9 decibel 8.9, I believe. But that's probably not right. So let's go. Let's get that set to actual ground level. Looks like 2.9 decibel 6.5. And uh, before we taxi off, let's go ahead and active armor laser, armor TGP, armor gun. Leave the master arm to uh, safe. That way, uh, once you get airborne, you're not you, you can activate everything. One flick of the button, and everything's good to go. Uh, so I believe that's it. Uh, yep. That's our engine start sequence. Let's see if we can actually taxi the runway without killing ourselves, shall we? Activate your nose wheel steering. Good to go. Uh, okay, so we got to take a right when we come out of here. Trying not to kill myself. Oh, look! Here's the runway. Uh, I think my wing just got caught up. Yeah, my wing just got caught up. Irrelevant! Uh, how the hell am I going to back up? I don't think I can back up. Well, that sucks. Anyway, um, you get the idea. That is how not to taxi to a fucking runway. Whoopsie. Uh, I wonder if I can go into, uh, let's see here, is there a ground arm that I can disable? Maybe I can back myself up. Ah, I think that's it. Nope, that's not it. Uh, ground arm, ground arm, ground arm, no switch steering. Hards, maybe it's over here. Flight control is flaps. Elevator trim, aileron. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Oh! I almost forgot. I'm a dumbass. Other than, in case you didn't notice, by me driving into the fucking hangar. Uh, before we get out of here, let's go over here to our uh, ILS and TACAN freaks. Uh, back back to serious stuff here. Here's your TAC in radio. Here's your ILS. So uh, let's go ahead and set our TAC in, even though we can't really go anywhere because I'm a dumbass. Uh, TAC in freak was 067 X ray, and our ILS was 1115. So 110. Scroll this all the way down. There we go. Now, I turn on the ILS radio. See, we got a beep. That beep is kind of annoying, so let's go over here to this circuit breaker. Push that in. Turn on our attack hand. And we're good to go. Uh, yeah. Just double check, make sure this goes all the way down to like damn near zero. Yep. Tac amp frequencies are correct. ILS frequencies are correct. Uh, and even though I can't really go anywhere. God damn it. I feel like a fucking dumbass. Anywho. That's how, uh, that's, uh, the engine start sequence. And, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me drive into the fucking building. But, uh, yeah, next time I should pro probably uh, look out my right side and make sure that you know, not, uh, <coughs> I've got the uh, wing clearance I need. herp a derp Alright, and we'll holler at you guys later. Next video we'll cover uh, weapons employment, and uh, it should be fun. Much more so than watching me click a bunch of switches. Later, tater.